In this video, I'll give an overview and demonstration of a piece of vintage test equipment, the Heathkit HD1 harmonic distortion meter. Distortion in electronics is the alteration of the original shape of an electrical signal. Distortion is usually unwanted, and engineers strive to minimize it in the design of circuits used in products such as audio amplifiers. Harmonic distortion is caused by overtones that are multiples of a sound wave's fundamental frequencies. Intermodulation distortion is the amplitude modulation of signals containing two or more different frequencies caused by nonlinearities in a system. A distortion meter can measure the level of distortion, typically as a percentage. They're primarily used for testing audio circuits like high fidelity or stereo audio systems. Often the unit is designed to measure just harmonic distortion or just intermodulation distortion. Over the years, Heathkit offered a number of models of both harmonic and intermodulation distortion meters. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. The HD1 harmonic distortion meter was sold as a kit by Heathkit from 1955 to 1962. It typically sold for US $49.50. It was replaced by the IM-12, sold from 1963 to 1968, and then the IM-58, offered from 1969 to 1976. All three units used an identical circuit and differed only in appearance, the style and color of the case and knobs. The IM-58 was replaced by the IM-5258, an entirely different solid-state design, which was sold until 1983. These were all harmonic distortion meters. Heathkit also offered a line of intermodulation distortion meters, which included the IM1, AA1, IM22, IM48, and IM5248. The units housed in a charcoal gray cabinet with white lettering in the style of other Heathkit test equipment of the era. The specifications are the following. It works with frequencies from 20 Hz to 20 kHz over three ranges. It can make distortion measurements in the ranges 0 to 1, 0 to 3, 0 to 10, 0 to 30, and 0 to 100 percent full scale. It supports voltmeter measurements in the ranges 0 to 1, 0 to 3, 0 to 10, and 0 to 30 volts RMS full scale. Input resistance is 300 kilo ohms. The minimum input voltage for distortion measurements is 0.3 volts. The output voltage for monitoring is 2.5 volts at the full scale meter reading. Accuracy of the voltmeter is plus or minus 5% of full scale and for distortion measurements plus or minus 5% of full scale plus 0.1%. The tube complement is 0A2, 6X4, 5879, 12AT7, 12AX7, and 12BY7. It runs on 105 to 125 volts, 50 or 60 cycles, takes 30 watts, and weighs about 5 kilograms or 11 pounds. In conjunction with a sine wave generator, you can measure percentage distortion at any frequency. By recording measurements at various frequencies, you could plot a distortion versus frequency curve. The basic theory of operation is that a sine wave of known frequency is applied to the input of the unit under test using a signal generator such as the Heathkit AG9A or IG72. The output is connected to the HD1. Fundamental frequencies are suppressed by a Wien bridge null network and what remains, predominantly harmonics, are applied to the metering circuit which is previously set to the total test voltage as a reference. The result is a reading which is a calibrated percentage of distortion. The circuit has three main parts, the fundamental suppression circuit, the voltmeter circuit, and the power supply. The fundamental suppression circuit uses a 12AX7 triode as a phase splitter, feeding a Wien bridge null network. The output of the bridge is amplified by a 5879 pentode and then fed to a 12AX7 cathode follower circuit. 
The input signal is also passed to a voltmeter circuit, which is essentially an AC vacuum tube voltmeter that drives the meter, consisting of a two-stage amplifier using both halves of a 12 AT7 triode. The power supply uses a transformer, 6x4 full wave rectifier, and a three-stage RC filter circuit with a 0A2 voltage regulator tube. An amplifier or other unit under test needs to be fed with a sine wave input from an audio generator. The output of the unit under test goes to the input jacks of the HD1. An optional meter or oscilloscope can be connected to the output jacks to monitor the signal. The sensitivity control is set to the 100% position. The range switch is set to the set level position and the level control adjusted for full scale deflection on the meter. This sets the reference level for the distortion measurement. The range switch is set to a suitable position for the frequency of the test signal and then the tuning control is adjusted for a minimum reading on the meter. The balance control is also adjusted for a minimum. The sensitivity control can now be set to a lower range and the tuning and balance controls readjusted for a minimum. The percentage harmonic distortion can now be read on the meter. With the sensitivity control on one of the voltage ranges, the level of the input signal can be measured and power calculated. If the signal source has an impedance of 600 ohms, then the power and DBM can be read directly from the meter with a suitable offset based on the range selected. The meter is calibrated with scales from 0 to 3 and 0 to 10, which are used when measuring voltage or percentage of distortion. It also shows DBM from minus 20 to plus 2, which can be used to show power and signal to noise ratio. Construction is pretty standard using point to point wiring on a metal chassis. It has two shielded compartments, one for the tuning cap and one for the range switch. This is to minimize hum pickup and in the case of the tuning cap it's not grounded so the shaft needs to be insulated to avoid the user's hand capacity from affecting the circuit. There's a small circuit board for the meter. It's not a printed circuit board, just a piece of phenolic material with riveted connectors for wiring on it. The large capacitor is a three microfarad non-polarized unit not a very common type. I actually decided to replace it since I was recapping most of the unit and it was available from the same source, JustRadios.com. The circuit is quite complex with six tubes of which two are dual making it equivalent to eight tubes. One tube is shielded. One of the tube designations may not be familiar to you, a 5879. However, it's not that rare. It was used in a lot of vintage audio and electric guitar amplifiers. The circuit uses a 0A2 gas regulator tube to regulate the power supply voltage. The tube is a cold cathode type which has a purple glow in normal operation because of the ionized gas inside. The power switch is a little unusual in that it is simply an on-off switch, but they went to the trouble to use a rotating switch and the same style of knobs as the rest of the unit rather than the more common toggle switch. I imagine this was for aesthetics to match the style of the other controls. Tuning uses a vernier with pulley and dial cord. The frequency indicator is unusual in that it looks like a knob but it's not meant to be turned. The tuning knob changes it. To make that clear they've used a knob with a smooth rather than knurled sides. I've never seen this style of knob before on Heathkit equipment. Some pictures in Heathkit catalog show the knob as being the same as the others. The knob also only indicates very rough positions for 20, 50, 100, and 200, which look like switch positions. I know when I first saw the unit, I tried to turn the dial. An accurate dial reading is not important because in operation, you generally know the input frequency and are just tuning for a null on the meter. The unit has no less than four wire-wound potentiometers, or rheostats as they were often called. One is the balance switch, and three are for calibration adjustments and are on the chassis.
I'll now give a demonstration of using the unit to measure distortion. First I'll use the output directly from this IG72 sine wave generator. I also have the output connected to this oscilloscope to monitor it. So we start with the range on the set level position and sensitivity at 100 and then we adjust the level switch for a full scale reading on the meter and this gives us our reference. We can now set range to a suitable range for the frequency that I'm outputting, in this case about 600 hertz, and adjust the tuning knob for a null. We can now reduce the sensitivity from 100% down to say 30 or 10%, adjust again for a null, and also adjust the balance control for a minimum reading. And again reduce the sensitivity further and get the minimum reading that we can on the tuning and with the balance control. And we can now read the distortion percentage directly off the meter. We're on the 3% scale, so we're looking at about 1.25% uh, distortion. I've now connected a couple of back-to-back -back signal diodes to the output of the signal generator. This has the effect of clipping and rounding off the signal so it's not a pure sine wave. And we can see that on the oscilloscope that it's a much more rounded sine wave. Again, going through the distortion measurement and adjusting for a minimum We can see that the distortion now is much higher, somewhere around uh, close to 15% distortion. And if we look at the oscilloscope, we can see that most of the distortion is on the first harmonic of the 600 hertz signal at about 1800 hertz. Incidentally, you'll note that the meter used on this AG9A signal generator is exactly the same as on the HD1. This is one of many examples where Heathkit was able to use common parts across different kits. I bought this unit in September of 2015 on Kijiji from a local seller as part of a lot of four units of test equipment. It's missing three of the four rubber feet and it has no handle which is common as often these were removed so the units could be stacked. All of the knobs are original. The unusual non-knurled knob was not in the correct position when I received it. It has some scratches and rust, but overall the cosmetics are pretty good for a unit that's over 50 years old. Restoration started with some visual inspection and cleaning the case and knobs and lubricating the moving parts. I powered it up slowly on a variac. All tubes lit up, including the purple glow of the 0A2 gas regulator tube the meter showed some indication. Unlike most test equipment, it does not do anything obvious on its own. It needs an input from a unit under test, which can be a signal generator. I connected the input of my IG72 audio generator. It seemed to be working correctly. I was able to null out the input signal and get a reasonable distortion value. There was some intermittent behavior, but it seemed to be okay after cleaning all tube pins and sockets. I installed a new line cord and rubber grommet and replaced the paper caps. There still seems to be some instability when the unit's been running for a while. The distortion value fluctuates. I've pretty much ruled out the capacitors and resistors and suspect that the 12BY7A tube may be the culprit. Unfortunately, I don't have a spare tube, so I'm going to do some more investigation before I resort to ordering a new tube. The unit did not come with a manual. I found copies of the circuit on the internet, but searched for some time for a manual. Eventually, I found a partial manual for the electrically identical IM58, which was not complete, but covers the calibration and operation procedures. I mentioned that the HD1, IM12, and IM58 all use the same circuit. There was one change in the IM58 circuit. It could be wired for operation on 240 volts AC and it used a grounded electrical cord. The manual is a little sparse. It doesn't give a lot of information on distortion measurements. The assembly procedure is also quite terse. 
This is likely because anyone building a distortion meter would be reasonably technical and experienced. The voltage is checked out against the ones listed in the manual. I ran through the calibration procedure in the manual. Calibration consists of adjusting the meter to show the correct input voltage reading, either using another AC voltmeter or, if one is not available, using the 6.3 volt pilot lamp and filament supply as a reference. The coarse balance control is adjusted for bridge balance, and the trimmer on the tuning cap is adjusted for minimum indication. Finally, the hum balance control is adjusted for a minimum reading with no input signal. The use of 1% resistors, a large meter, heavy shielding, and regulated power supply were some of the features that distinguished this as a lab quality instrument, at least by the standards of the time. The price of $49.50 in 1955 would be equivalent to almost $500 today. This was not a common piece of equipment that hobbyists or radio repair shops are likely to have on their test bench. It was more likely to be used by a shop that specialized in audio equipment like amplifiers and public address systems, or if one had a need to test or characterize audio amplifiers. As a testament to the design, the original HD1 circuit was used unchanged from 1955 to 1976 through the three models of distortion meters that Heathkit offered, and only updated for the move to a solid state design in 1976. Note that I've covered the AG9A and IG72 audio generators in other YouTube videos. For the time, it was quite a useful instrument, although modern solid-state audio amplifiers may have distortion that's too low for this unit to measure, so it's not useful for characterizing high-quality audio equipment. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage amateur radio and test equipment.